Um, I didn't talk about, and I probably should have spoke on this earlier, that um, I selected a date and it was January 7th I was going to leave. And I had not figured out this whole trip yet. So I there was a part, which is the Darien Gap, that I hadn't figured out. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, in a few minutes, but I hadn't figured that out. So there were still things that I hadn't figured out. So when I read the, the Martin Luther King quote, you know, it, this is where I was. I, I didn't have everything figured out. I didn't see every single step, but I felt confident that I could do this. And in the in my initial leaving, I thought I would I was prepared to only make it to Panama because I hadn't figured out the gap yet. Now the picture you see here with all the the ladies, this is this is too deep. These are the people who helped me prepare, um, who tracked me who made sure I had everything that I need. But kind of the, the crazy thing is January, well, I, I'm jumping now, so I got to go back again. So I wasn't sure how I was going to get across the gap. And I got on Facebook and I saw this guy on there looking for someone to share a container to go over the Darien Gap. And uh, I think Breezy put a question in the, in the, in the question, said, was the stall right? Um, running. The stall right was not running. It shut down after COVID. So that was what I planned originally um, to get there, but it, it shut down. So that wasn't an option. And then I saw Itchy Boots take her bike on a some small boat where they picked it up and yee, across. And I was not doing that either. So really, I thought Panama was where I would um, stop the ride. But this guy was asking, and he was going a week later than I was. Um, and that's Roy. And I, we'll, you, you'll get to know Roy as we go through. But Roy was doing basically the same journey. He's with the llamas. Um, and he he also had a few places he wanted to stop, which was Barranquilla, um, Colombia as well for a llama event. But I decided I would share with him. So I reached out to him. We decided we would meet in at the border of Mexico and, and Texas. But he's a huge part of this ride. And I, as I go through, you'll see that. But on this day, January 13th, uh, when I left my house, I was thinking about it the other day. I was, I was on the plane looking at pictures. And I didn't have like a group, you know, saying, hey, bye and waving and all of that. But I was so emotional that day because as much preparation as I did, I wasn't a hundred percent sure I was coming back or what would happen to me on the journey. I, I, I was prepared. I was confident, yeah. but you know, there's you always know. that. You don't know the unknown, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's at work. Um, I get on my bike, load up me, Dora and blue. And uh, I stop by everybody's office by their work, gave them a hug, just in case. And then I got on the road. Question. I was like, man, I need to get a party. <laughs> Question. Did everybody think you were crazy? Yeah. Yeah. I, I it couple, wasn't a fan favorite. I, I, I bet a couple of times you woke up and go, am I crazy? <laughs> oh, every, every single day, but I already know the answer to that. So yeah. Gotta go. Yeah, they gotta go. It was not a fan favorite for me to to leave, especially leave solo. And then when I told them I'm, you know, I was gonna hook up with this guy, they're like, um, no. you don't even know him. <laughs> like, is he a serial yeah. killer? And yeah. you know, I'm like, I don't know, but yeah. Man, fate is something else, isn't it? Oh my fate gosh, is something else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just in you. It it was just you were going to do this and you weren't going to be denied. God yeah. knew it. God knew it because he had to be on your side because there's a million and one ways that something could go wrong. In my, in my mind, the way that I kept going each mile was I had to tell myself, you know how to ride your bike and all you have to do is get to the next gas station. Mm, yep. And if you get to the next gas station, then 
you can decide to turn around. You can decide whatever you want. Yeah. And I had confidence in getting to the next gas station. So when, yeah. when I'm telling people, you know, on Facebook, they're saying they're going on a ride and they're saying they're worried. I'm like one mile at a time. All right. So we can go to the next slide. Now, this is the first leg, Mexico. I didn't plan to hit all these countries. So I got to say, um, probably several of you know Greg Rice. Um, I think Greg Rice, maybe, I can't remember if it was Mike Bobbitt or, or Chris Hopper. Went, they did a, a iron butt run from Texas to Panama. And... So I was watching this because I was I was already planning. And I hadn't done it. And they did that run. So I was like, oh, OK. So I'm Googling. I'm watching everything that they're doing. And one of the things that Greg Rice did, and I have to give him huge props, is he documented every step, every border, anything about that. So I knew I needed to do the the, the same thing. And I used a lot of what he had. He went straight through, I knew that that wasn't my ride. I wasn't going to go straight through. But if you go to the next slide, I'll show you how I planned that. So he, I think they did it like in seven or nine days or something like that. And my mentality was, I just kind of want to finish. So I want to get there. I'm not going to race. Um, you can see the, the way I did it is the day of the trip. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'd say what day of the week it is, what the date is, where I'm starting, where wow. I'm going, where I'm ending. Wow. And then how many miles that day? And you yeah. see, that's not 800. It's not yeah, 900. The miles are pretty modest. So you can still enjoy the ride. I yeah. The, I didn't want to race. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. by myself. I want to enjoy what I'm doing. Um, and then you'll see, I put hotels. And these are potential hotels because I had I didn't book anything ahead of time because I wasn't sure how far I would get. But I had that as a target. And I think this says that I had like 13 days that I was going to do the whole thing. <laughs> I don't um, know how many days see. I actually yeah, ended 13. up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many days I actually did, but I'm pretty sure I spent at least 10 of those days in Mexico. Okay. Um. So one thing you'll see in the hotel section is I have stuff like how many, how far from the border. So in my experience and in all the feedback, you don't want to stay close to the border. You want to stay far enough away from it. So I try my best and, and well, let me back up. And the border crossings can be, you know, I think the, the, the quickest one was three hours. It felt like two, but it was like three hours. And the longest one was like six hours. So we tried to get to every single border um, early so that you can get through the process and then get far enough away from the border um, that you're not staying right in that border town. Uh, that's how I planned this. So mm -hmm. I did research for hotels, how far they are away from the border. Um, and I put this plan together. I didn't follow this plan, but this plan gave me the confidence to leave my house. You go to the next slide. 